Welcome to the class and today topics is about MVVM model view view model architecture okay so before I explain the architecture the MVVM architecture I need to address a fundamental concept behind it probably you already know about it but I will re-explain again uh, before we move on to MVVM Okay, so the first concept is about activity life cycles. You already know these life cycles in previous course in mobile application or native mobile programming courses. And uh, these activity life cycles explain that every activity has its own life cycles. And it's just a collection of callback methods yeah, to inform the conditions of the activity yeah to inform uh, what condition that uh, occurred in an activity whether it's already ready to be interact with user or whether it's stopped for some reasons whether it's lost uh, its display and changed to other activity view and so on and so on so uh, basically it's just a collection of callback methods to inform the object state conditions here we uh, usually just need to override these uh, functions here yeah, in order to do something when that state uh, occur. Yeah, for instance, yeah, we usually override the on create to prepare what we need to do in the logic, the data, and so on. What we need to do in in the activity itself. So it goes to on start and it goes to on resume and so on and so on. And probably if you working on the game applications, yeah, you work on the game applications or multimedia applications that you need to uh, show some interactivity, you probably need to uh, stop everything, pause everything when the state of the activity go to the on stops. Yeah, that's just uh, that's uh, just example that you need to address different things on different state of activity. Okay. And you have to know that uh, not only activity has its life cycles, there are also the other objects also has its own life cycles. For example, fragments, view model, and and broadcast receiver, it's its own life cycle. Okay, let's continue to fragment life cycle. So um, fragment is a little bit complex compared to the activity because um, it it has uh, on attached means that uh, every fragment must be attached first yeah in activity before it can um, uh, launch or uh, operate whatever uh, business logic inside the fragments itself so uh, basically it's starting from on attached on create and so on and so on it's quite similar with with uh, activity and uh, once again, every state here, every life cycle state here is just to inform the fragment conditions. So um, yes, you have to override these functions if you want to do something when that conditions appear or occur. Yeah. Okay. Now I will show you the uh, reasons why we learn the MVVM architecture. Okay. So the first system, there's, there's a lot of complex micromanagements that uh, we uh, feel when uh, that we feel when develop the Android programs. First, uh, it just, it's just for examples. Yeah, there's a lot of ex uh, complex examples, but I will only show I only shows you four the more popular. First is handling asynchronous cla cla uh, calls. Yeah, you know that. Um, there is a lot of classes that can run independently in uh, different multi-threads conditions such as loading data from uh, REST API or backend database using uh, REST API and return it in form of JSON. You know, you already know how to do it in uh, previous courses. You, uh, you use the library that uh, can handle thread independently and this is done uh, in asynchronous uh, order yeah it means 
it's separate with uh, the user interface threads it goes independently and you need to handle it manually so you need to handle when when the when the data or this uh, the operation finish or it lost connections or disruption in network and so on and on you have to handle it manually and then you have to adjust your ui according to the any situations so this is called handle asynchronous calls micromanagements okay handle configuration changes it means that every time uh, the activity or fragments uh, change configurations you need to update adjust the ui states on your activity or fragment i give you an example for instance if you rotate your phones yeah if you rotate your phones uh, what happened here is the activity activity is suddenly stop go to the stop and then it creates again it call it on create again so when you rotate your phones the activity is destroyed and recreate again it means that every ui states that you put in activity such as checking the checkbox and then fill in the fill in the um, what is called edit text and so on and so on you have to do it again you have to uh, manually uh, uh, recall the content or the value again so that's it's called this is called a handle configuration changes just not only for rotating your device uh, other things can happen in configuration changes like uh, when user use multi views it will usually call or trigger the handle or to trigger the configuration changes okay the third complex micromanagement is data updates means that every time um, the, uh, the changes happen on your activity every time the states happen or occurred on the activity sometimes you need to update the activity data yeah you need to refetch you need to recall you need to redownload the content of the of the activity and show it to users so you have to do it manually possibly yeah possibly possible outcome is you need to override everything on your on activity lifecycle states to uh, give like a to make sure everything's doing fine when uh, activity change the states and finally the the, the most uh, complex micromanagement that you need to aware of is the memory leak problems yeah the um the famous example is like uh when you put a lot of backstack when you put a lot of activity or fragment in backstack and then you forget to destroy it and you dump or free uh you put it a lot of things in the backstack it's going to be uh, one example of memory leak problems okay so basically memory leak problem is occur where you allocate a memory to the object and then you forgot or cannot uh, disallocate that memory back okay so somehow this will affect your your application performance in in the futures okay so um, this is a complex micromanagement and usually we we face it we work with it daily basis and i give you today uh, uh, a way to uh, minimize these complex micromanagements okay so um first i uh, let me in let me introduce the view model life cycle so view model is a new class uh, in android jetpack library and it used to encapsulate the data for a ui controller to let the data survive means that it separates the ui and the data itself it handles the data and um, uh, whatever uh, the activity or fragment chain state your data is still intact yeah it survives okay so it handles the data and when uh, when it did it it can uh, update the ui uh, send the data to the activity and the activity can update the ui and so on um, View model offer much more simple life cycle. So um, this view model, aware of on create, on start, on resume, whatever happens on the activity. So the view model know the states of the activity. Okay, exception is when when it finished 
this view model will be uh, clear yeah this one called okay so it no longer handle this activity and view model is considered as a life cycle aware because it's know everything about activity and view model have one method to handle those states so imagine uh, when you work with activity you need to override everything here on create on start and so on and so on but in view model you only need to write single functions single functions to handle every states in uh, the activity of fragments okay so that's uh, a why view model have an advanced uh, things in this case yeah because it has sim more simple life cycles compared to other uh, objects okay and um, according to the google yeah uh, beside the view model uh, you need to understand one thing one object because the view model has live data in it so what is live data uh, before i explain this object or class of, of live data you need to understand several different terms first is the term of observable okay observable object is an object that emit value or data so these things the live data is kind of observable because it can radiate or emit the value or the data to to anything that observe him or observe it sorry and uh, we know that uh, we have observer which is something that attaches and watch observable object in order to receive the data that observable emits so if you see here there's a lot of observer that attaches to this observable object and it's ready to um, receive the data okay so what is observer actually yeah observer could be uh, something inside this fragment something is at the activity and so on and so on it could be a lot of things yeah it could be single object or multiple objects and a lot of object can can observe a single observable uh, object okay so uh, the live data is an observable older class and uh, this uh, class hold uh, data that usually uh, um, receive or get from the out external sources of internal sources and then uh, the, if you, uh, you need to know that live data only serve those that active yeah those are uh, active observer so as you can see here uh, this observer one active in active state it means that the live data can uh, uh, transmit or the observer one can receive the update from the live data and observer four in on resumes condition it's it's uh, basically uh, have the same uh, uh, action or the same uh, rights to receive the data uh, same thing happened on observer 5 but the observer 2 and observer 3 is in the condition when it's considered as stop or pause or destroyed and it no longer receive the live data update so basically live data uh, send the data or emit the data observer receive the data or observe the data so this this concept is very important when you work with the, with the view model because view models hold a lot of live data and then whatever things that use this view model uh, can observe the changes in the live data itself so it can update the ui and so on and so on so uh, to make a clear i will demonstrate to you in in the next tutorial but uh, let me show you uh, more things information about live data why we use live data because no memory leaks yeah because um, uh, it handles everything yeah when it change the states when you um, uh, the, the activity go on stop it automatically clean up clean up the resource uses uses in in this um, uh, object and and it will free up memory that not being used and means that your applications uh, no longer have memory leaks problem and it's always up to the data so every time observe requests or observe something from the left data or every time the left data has a new update the observer will receive it 
and also it manages configuration changes so you no need to worry about uh, the changes on your activity states like uh, when you rotate the device uh, the left data handle it for you okay so um, that's a good thing about left data and um, when and now i will uh, explain to you our main topics for today's course is called mvvm model view view model architecture okay so what is mvvm architecture so uh, we thought architecture first usually we put everything everything all ui and io uh, operations like uh, create database and then uh, run query to from uh, or I mean request uh, data from server in form of JSON and using the REST API and so on and so on. We usually do that everything in single activity, okay? And uh, people usually call it as gut object because it it can, it handle everything, UI and business logic. So. The MVVM architecture basically provides a way to structure our code in a way that provides some advantages. In these terms, it separates the business and the presentation logic from the UI. It means that um, it separates the data and separates the uh, whatever uh, access to the user interface. So it separates the things that uh, uh, do the sum do the action with UI and the things that handle the data. It's it's a way to provide a structure to be nice and understandable with uh, MVVM architectures. Okay, and it associated with the view model and view models object. So what is view? What is model? And what is a few models? Okay, let's take a look one by one. The view is where you can interact with the activity, when you can see it, when you can click on it, when you can handle uh, listen to it, and so on and so on. So the view is usually responsible for anything that uh, uh, has uh, connection or have uh, action with the layout or with the UI, uh, whether it's displayed on the screen or not. Okay. So the view is responsible for the layout structure, displayed on screen, and also the object inside it. And then you can also execute UI logic. Yeah, means that you can change the button to be disabled. You can uh, add a new value to the edit text and so on and so on. So view is handle those things. So what's uh, considered as view is a lot of things from the activity fragment and so on that usually uh, have uh, interaction with the layout. And next, what is model? Model is a non-visual. You cannot visualize it. It's a non-visual class that has the data to use. So it uh, contains the data. I mean, it's like a blueprint, not contains the data. It's um, similar like a blueprint. And then um, we usually uh, retrieve the data from REST API in form of JSON or from internal SQLite database or data access model, data access object. Okay, so the model um, holds the data or contain the blueprint class for for uh, to be consumed by uh, views. Okay, so it holds the data. Views hold the UI, and the last one is the view model. The view model implements the data and comments connected to the view to notify the view of state changes via the change notification events. So it means that um, the view model hold information from the model and it needs to um, update the view that view need to change something in it okay so basically it's like a bridging bridging thing between model and the view and then view receive that state changes notification and determine whether to apply the change or not so basically view model prepare the data for view okay so view consume it and do something with the data for example, display it on screen, display as dialog box, display as um, warning box, and so on and so on. It, whatever condition it was. Okay. And to make it clear, let me show you with this diagram. So um, the uh, the view object is usually in form of activity of fragment. 
and inside it it has a lot of codes that um, change the UI yeah change the UI and this call this usually called as observer okay so it's observe it's observe the live data from the view model so the live data inside the view model uh, will be populated or will be um, injected with the data from repository it could be external sorry this one external and it could be internal okay so it uh, the data could be from external means that we uh, fetch the data from web service using the rest api modes or or it can be from the android itself your phone itself using sqlite and it uh, it consume the dao data access object of course you will learn what is a letter in the next next lecture but um, you have to know that this live data contains the data either from external or internal database and then the observer receive the update yeah from the live data okay so the live data handle everything from the ui from the activity whether it's change the state change the configuration and so on okay uh, that's enough uh, theory today i hope you uh, don't overhand these informations because uh, usually when we do the practice do you do we do the exercise i mean you will know a lot of uh, mvvm better okay and we uh, enter the tutorials so we are today we are going to create projects that use mvvm architecture and what we create is classic example of data list in a recycler view so you see recycler view it's uh, it's populated injected with uh, dummy data student and then when we press the detail here it's um, it display display the the contents the data again it just uh, we only work with the dummy and next week we are going to use the real data use the real uh, populate with real library yeah i mean uh, fetching from web service and so on okay so uh, uh, this week we create a new project start to enter social project name it as a uh, tv week four use default project configura configuration and play template yeah just press press next and finish uh, create a new github repo with any name according to your preferences connect and establish the github repo to this project and make your first commit and push yeah as usual you do this yeah and your blank project will be uh, uploaded to github okay if you done uh, you may pause now do it right now and then after you done you can you may continue okay so uh, the first things we need to do is setting up the dependency like uh, you like you do in in the first week or second week I mean, sorry, like a previous week uh, tutorials, we put the Hotlin Android extensions on the uh, Gradle. So you open the Gradle things here, and we put the ID, ID uh, Android, sorry, Kotlin Android extensions, okay, Kotlin Android extensions. And uh, in the same Gradle files, you apply this plugin under the build tools version apply plugin okay android x dot navigations save arcs kotlin okay so uh, if you forget what it is you may review back uh, last week uh, lecture and uh, open the gradle project file under the dependency you have to add this okay dev nav versions equals two three three classpad android x dot navigation navigation save Gradle plugin and it is 
the nav version buff without this you may you find it directly in these strings here uh, without writing this one you can uh, directly write 233 in here okay press sync now and wait for several uh, seconds and next are uh, we going to create the views yeah the first things creating the views so a uh, project should be structured in mvvm way to make it clear and tidy so we are going to um, uh, create a new package and we separate the view model and view model uh, before that i have error in here the android x navigation save arc is not found it usually I uh, I write wrong wrong uh, string here apply uh, plugins Android X navigations save arcs uh, okay I forgot I missed the S here save arcs all right I hope it works okay um how to create package yeah you you can create new package very easy by right click on the package name new and package and then create model view view model uh, separately so let me minimize this so let's right click on the package name right click and choose new and choose the package here and type in model as you can see here we create a new package app it still use the uh, previous package it will create subdirectory on it so uh, we create a new package and usually a new package means you create a new subdirectory repeat again and now write view do it one more time write a uh, view model all right so we have a model view and view model okay and according to mvvm architecture every object that related with ui logic must be placed inside the view package means that um, things like fragments and activity must be put inside the view okay so uh, what you need to do is just uh, drag and drop this main activity here to the view package and go with the default settings and just press refactors with uh, several uh, seconds but if you notice here uh, my main activity is still in the outside of uh package name but i think it's like a bug yeah so um in order to fix it you need to rebuild it at least once yeah just click build and then rebuild your projects but if you see here in package it's already in correct position see the com t2 solution at tv week 4 c dot view means that main activity already inside the view right okay next uh, we are going to create two fragments, yeah, the student list fragments to show list of students, and secondly, uh, we create the student detail fragments to show the fragment details on selected students. Okay, and um, to do it because fragments hold the UI logic, yeah, means it it's it's uh it has operation, it interacts, it has interaction with the UI. It means that you need to create this fragment inside the view. Okay, right click on it, new fragment, just blank. First, we define the student list fragment. Student list fragment, press finish. And you do the same thing, fragment, blank, A student detail fragment. Okay, student detail fragment finish. Okay, done. And next, um, we are going to uh, create layout for it. But before that, I need to uh, clean up the fragment class here, like last week. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we only need the on create view, and of course you have to override this on view created okay just override it and we do the same thing for student detail delete unnecessary codes this component object also will be deleted 
and we of right the on view created okay done so uh, let's jump to the uh, student list layout so open the student list fragment or fragment student list xml here you have text view here deleted and we find the constraint layout and drag it under the frame layout here okay so we are uh, going to put a new layout you may uh, never heard or uh, uh, never used it previously in our tutorial uh, today we are going to use it we are uh, we are going to use the swipe refresh layout so unfortunately you can do the drag and drop things for this layout so you need to you need to um, uh, uh, use it, uh, write it manually in the code XML here. So, um, okay, under the frame layout, you just need to type the swipe. Okay, okay, swipe, yeah, swipe, refresh, swipe, yeah, this one, the first one, swipe, this refresh layout, and then match parent and match parent here and you just need to cut and paste the tools context here from above to this one and close it with the closing and capture the tag and you need to move the android constraint layout here uh, under or within this android swiper refresh layout text so you need to just to cut it and paste it under or uh, inside yeah inside the uh, swipe refresh layout okay just goes like this so you have swipe refresh layout and uh, inside it you have the constraint so go back to the design you have something like this okay it contains constraint layout so what is swipe refresh layout so um the swipe refresh layout it, uh, it will detect the vertical swipe and it shows like a progress bar and trigger callback methods in your app usually we in initiate the fetching data actions from the repository yeah from the data source okay so um uh, we are going to implement that later but at least we already prepared that in our uh, projects okay so we put three things inside the constant layout first we put the recycle view second we put the progress layout progress bar and then thirdly you uh, put the text view so find the recycle view first okay drag and drop to constant layout you can now have a recycle view and you name it as rack view rack view remember you have to constrain it all so i just press the uh, the magic one yeah to constrain it and um find the progress bar you put it be careful um do not put an uh, inside rack view uh, you have to put it uh, under constraint layout so it has the same uh, position as rack view in in the component tree order positions so the progress bar shows progress yeah but in our lecture today we not really use extens uh, external source data we will only use the dummy data okay so it's not works as it is yeah so it just like uh, anim uh, uh, dummy animations it's just dummy animation yeah to to create a fake loading yeah fake loading data okay so we have this a progress load do not forget to test this id to progress load refactors and then uh, finally you have the text view right this text view will be attached to the left right and send a uh, button and make it look uh, in the center screen uh, positions okay so uh, we type error error loading the data okay error loading the data means that um, somehow sometimes when when uh, things goes wrong like it doesn't have any con connect internet connection or it has uh, it ha uh, they have a problem any kind of problem this error will show up and to inform the user that something's wrong happens okay 
that's it for the recycle view for the um, student list our fragments and if you notice we use recycler view means that you have to create a layout to be rendered in each individual item here so um, uh, you need to to create a layout for it so manually you create a new layout for this just right click on the layout new layout resource file and then you type the student list item okay student list item and it use constraint really layout as its parent just press ok now we have an empty one so uh, you need to design the layout like this so things first thing to do is just drag and drop card view inside it and the constraint constraint layout inside the card view it's sorry yeah that one and the card view should be um constraint to its its side okay and then okay with zero db work content okay i give you uh i give it small spaces yeah 16 16 and bottom also 16 and the constant layout the parent itself should be a uh, web content okay so we have it and we put one by one first in the image view put it under constant layout just choose any image it doesn't matter oh wait we got something wrong here okay the the top constraints i think all right the bottom constraints the left constraint let me repeat again uh how we should constrain it right Okay, should be 16 and this one should be on on very bottom of screens this one should be in the top yeah 16 16 okay all right okay all right yeah so next let me zoom in a little bit so this card view should have uh content uh corner radius 8 db and it elevate 2 db so you see small corner on this card and we put uh additional item like an id drag and drop on screens and put it on the top Put it in left in the right of the image and then set id for it txt id okay refactor id right and we drag and drop another text view put under it and set some distance 24 okay and this one should be text the name free factor student name all right and finally we have bold yep okay make it bigger 15 sp all right and put the button details on the right corner of the cards okay 16 16 okay i think it should be 8 yeah right it should be in here and put it 8 and we will be at set id for it button detail refactor okay and it's it to detail Okay, and and then um, we change the style of the bear button to be the outlined box. I'm sorry, not, not that one. Outline outline button. This one. Okay, nice. 
So we have this ID, we have name, we have button detail, we have image view, which is, we forgot to set ID for it, but it doesn't matter. And, okay, I got an error here. This missing constant, oh yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. I forgot to constant it. Top, left, button. All right, done. Next, um, we create the fragment student detail layout, okay open the fragment student detail layout yeah we have empty one delete it and find the constraint layout and we put one image in it okay uh, drag to the top drag to the left drag to the right put it a little bit uh, and then we put for text input okay it should be the text input layout one two three and four and we have one button update uh come on button yep that's it so next things we constrain it all First, click the text input layout here. Constrain to the bottom of image view. Set ID at distance. Okay. 16 and 16. Okay. Do the same thing with second text input. Oops, sorry. Okay. Sixteen. Sixteen. And last one. Sixteen. And the bottom should be on the bottom one. Okay. 16 and 24 okay so this one should be PDN update refactor change it to update okay and that handle F or the text okay we should rename it starting from the top so be txt ID Okay, second one should be txt uh, name refactor. Um, yeah, we have conflict here because txt name already exists, but just press continue. And next, um, we have txt pod. Next, we have txt phone. Alright, so we have a uh, different ID or the text view. Now we change the uh, the inter, uh, the styles. Yeah. So first, find the style for the text input layout and use the outlined box. Enter. Click in here outline box enter this one outline box enter and finally we have outline box enter okay so um, let's uh, delete hint in individual text so delete the hint this one should be Without hint, without hint, okay, and click and on every 
text input layout and find and tick the hint animation enable and hint enable and for the first one should be student id second one should be student name third one should be uh dpog but of that yeah and finally we have font okay i think that's all for the layout for fragment students so next one uh we create the navigation graph uh right click on the rest new um android resource file type in main navigations and use navigation here press ok yeah um, just press ok to add the dependency for navigation graph and it's simple navigation actually you just use the student list fragment and it can navigate to the student detail fragment okay so we have only have two destinations the student list fragment and i don't know why it's not unable to preview it okay maybe we use swipe refresh as uh, layout in it but i'm not i'm not sure okay so we have student list uh, connected to the student detail fragments and don't forget to rename this as an action student detail okay action student detail don't forget to rebuild after finish build rebuild okay uh, the last things um, we need to do is set up the host fragment I mean the last thing for uh, navigation setting up the navigations okay we have to uh, host the fragments so the better the uh, popular places to do it is within the activity itself so in this case the hello world will be deleted and we drag and drop the host fragment host fragment nav host fragment in the coastal layout and choose the main navigations okay and then we uh, click the magic wand and we add id for it fragment host and i think that's it for the nav host fragments and uh, finally yeah so the first step second step three third step uh we already know it yeah because it's a repeat uh, review from the previous weeks okay we handle navigations and the, fact, uh, the four steps here we starting create the, the models to uh, use the mpvm architecture for our projects so um, the model is basically just simple file that hold data or blueprint in form of data class so the model may have more than one class so in this case do not create a kotlin class but you just create the file class okay right click on the model package new kotlin class file choose file here and name it as model enter so you just have one empty uh, class empty file i mean and you write the data class for the student so we um, prepare the student data so it contains constructors of course you know already know it we have id string we have student name string we also have a pod string and we have a, um, phone string and we have photo URL also string so this is it yeah this is our student class okay so um, question marks uh, on the rear of this each variable here means that it may be null yeah it can contain null okay and to simplify things our model only accepts strings okay so if the this, this uh, the source of object is in different format you need to parse it to strings okay um 
we already have the model students, the model that contains student class or blueprints. Remember, if you work with the recycler view, yeah, if you work with, with the recycler view, where is my recycler view? Yeah, this one. You need to prepare the adapter, yeah, to use the recycler view. Okay, so uh, we create the adapter under the view or within the view package. Right click new class and uh, name it as student list adapter. Enter, okay, and that's it. Choose class and then press enter. Why this adapter put in the view package? Why don't we put in the model package? Yeah, because the student list adapter oftenly um, uh, do something with the UI. Yeah, change the UI usually. Yeah, deal with the UI such as uh, render its item on the list. Yeah, Ren uh, handle um, interaction with the list and so on and so on. Okay. Let's continue how the adapter should receive the array list of students. Notice that I put students here. And no, 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 student list. Yeah, it should be array list of student. Yep, that's it. And it, we, we should extend it. Yeah, we should extend to array adapter class that requires the view holder class. But for to make it simple, we create the view holder class as an inner class. Okay, so under the class and uh, inside the class, we create an inner class of view holder student view holders. This thing will be used by extensions of the array adapter. So we just prepare it view and then don't forget to alt enter import and extend it as. A recycler view dot view holder okay and we put the view object here right so we have inner class student view holder and it will ready to use by this uh, interface I think okay let's extend it to interface recycler view dot adapter and we put the uh, uh, student list which is this class, yeah. Student is adapter is this class. Dot student view holder and then without uh, constructor with empty constructor. Okay, with empty constructor. So we extend it to recycle view adapter, which requires the student view holder class. And to make it simple, uh, we not no need to create a new class for it. Just use inner class in it. Okay. Uh, without any constructor in it okay so that's it for student list adapter um, header now we have to implement the interface alt enter implement member select everything just press ok and delete all to do delete all to do delete all to do okay so we need to implement all these functions yeah and the easiest one to implement is the get item counts. The get item count uh, will return the number of data and inside the student list. So basically, it just to return the student list dot size. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Next, um, we are going to load the uh, the the layout for individual item in the cycle of list. Remember, we already create this one this interface the card interface will be loaded and will be put in an, uh, uh, inside the recycler view so we you we need to load it in this on create view holder so starting with the fall inflator object which is taken from layout inflate inflator dot from parent context okay and then we inflate the view inflator dot inflate and we uh, use the layout yeah from the uh, student list item this single item here and you notice that we have our error here just click it and alt enter import it will fix it and we take the student list item and uh, the parent second parameter and should be attached to the root should be 
false okay returns yeah uh, just return it because it's request student view holder we return the student view holder view okay so that's it we inflate this layout on its item yeah it's single item use this layout on i mean on uh, the single item in the recycle view is here it use this layout yeah it done in this one okay and then uh, to change the data the id the student name and so on we do it in the uh, uh band view holder okay next uh, but uh uh band view holder oh before we do that we handle the button detail remember um oh wait a minute uh, it, uh, it should be it should not be put in button detail listener i will fix that later it should be put it under the on bind view holder but okay never mind on on it i will fix that later okay but let's um change the data in it yeah um forgot the image and we will handle it later i just want to load the id and the student name so go to on bind view folder tap in holder dot view dot txt id be careful when you choose txt id because we have two object with the same id the fragment student detail and the student list yeah just put the student list dot text equals yeah we want to uh, access the data from this student list okay just type in student list dot i'm sorry position dot uh, id okay remember the on band view holder will be called on its item on its single item in the recycler view list yeah depend on the data on the student list data so the position indicate that uh, which item position that you want to access okay so this will be zero one two and so on and so on okay so we do the same thing for the extend name be careful when you choose the name because if you target wrong uh, id in different layout that not uh, loaded yet it will uh, you will have the exceptions no no exception no pointer exceptions student list uh, positions dot name i guess right so we have this one and finally we put the button view detail listener in it holder dot um view dot button detail dot set on click listener and we start with navigation dot and find enough controller it and uh, we and we want to navigate to somewhere and we create file action equals uh what is called student uh list fragment directions dot action student detail and we put the action here okay uh, when we press the detail the button detail it will navigate to the uh, button uh, for uh, fragmented detail all right and we should return it don't forget it returned and sorry i'm sorry wait wait yeah no need no need to return yeah no need to return because uh, this one is uh on the on grid view holder so the on band view holder doesn't have any return value okay leave it and update student list function so we create the update student list function the main purpose of this function is to reload or refresh the data so uh, we can put in anywhere but i think i will put in top of the of function so in here fund uh, update student list here so this um function will receive one uh, parameter which is the new data the new student list data okay so it should be new student list which is list of student there's a reason why we use list instead of array list I will explain that later but for now just use list 
and it is basically have the same ability for a release yeah and um, in this case uh, we want to clear up the student list variable we have clear up it will uh, reset or delete everything in the student list and then we uh, add new one taken from the new student list okay we uh, we repopulate again with the new student list and we call the notify data set change the notify data set change tells the recycler view that every single item should be rendered re-rendered or re-updated okay so when it called it will refresh the recycler view um, to reflect new data okay that's it for our um, uh, adapter now we move on to the view model okay the view model class is designed to store and manage ui related with the data in a life cycle aware way okay so the view model provides a way to emit the data to observer okay so uh, just like i said earlier that view model doesn't know the view it doesn't care with the view it only uh, works with the uh, the model and uh, it will emit the data and just let the view observe the data and use it in the view okay so go to the view model so we have model we have view and finally we have view model package right click on it we create a new cotton class file and we choose uh oh wait a minute I think this one is class. Oh, yeah, class. Okay, class. Name it as list view model. Enter list view model. The first thing you do is uh, extend it to view model. Okay, extend it to view model. Okay, and then secondly, um, we create three variables um to uh, I mean to to hold the live data okay so in in this case we create three uh, live data yeah first is students live data which is uh, the data that hold the students yeah list that can be observed observed by our fragments so the fragment will observe the data and update the adapter and show it to inside the recycler view okay and then the second one is just for the error loading error um informations yeah and the third one is just for loading informations yeah loading the data information so uh, we create this three object students uh ld means that I use the infix ld means that this one is live data the object of live data equals or uh, equals mutable mutable live data and it's uh it's a kind of list yeah the data type is list of student okay it's list of student right and then we call the cost structure so what is mutable live data? Mutable live data is just uh, live data that emit data to observer and it can be updated. Yeah, means that the, the value can be changed because it yes, it has different property for it. Okay, and next um we do the same thing for the loading error for uh, let me simplify it loading error ld mutable left data and the data type should be simple boolean i'm sorry it should be like this boolean and finally we have full loading ld equals mutable alive data boolean also that's it yeah 
So we have three live data and it's ready to be observed by some things, by any things. In this case, we observe it with our fragments, our fragment list, and we will observe the student data. We will observe the which is error or not. And then finally, we, have, we will observe which is is, it, is the, the data already loaded or not. Okay, so the thing, the three things is, is observable. Okay, and next we we use this call refresh functions fund refresh uh, like this, and we create okay, we create dummy dummy hard coded data. Yeah, as you can see here, we have a dummy hard coded data. So in next lecture, we will replace this with our actual using backend service API to load the data. So for now, we just use, we just need to create a dummy data for it. Student one equals student. Okay, so um, in order to create something like this, I'm usually use um, dummy uh, the, uh, data generator. I'm usually just Macro mockeroo.com yeah and we change it to in order to to your needs so um if you see in model we have id and then we have name we have pod we have phone and we have photo url okay we don't need the last one okay the id should be any um any any number yeah could be quit or bundle id or whatever uh whatever it can so let me find the yeah this one the aim and field name should be Should be name first name and BOD will be date I think okay oh, where is it where is the date time should be anywhere here yeah this one the date time from um, this number this date to this date so let's change this change the years okay I'm using the format of MySQL or database format and phones will be phone just use the phone without any additional character and the photo should be uh, image dummy image url okay and should be 70 170 Okay, I think I that's it. That's all. Just click preview, and you got the data for you. Yeah, just copy the, the first three, Control C, and go back to your uh, Android. So first is the ID. Second should be the name. Third should be the POD, and fourth is phone. And finally, we have image. Okay, you just need to cut it, paste, cut it, paste, cut it here, and do it again until it's done. So this one, cut this one, and put it here. Okay, so we have first student, second student, third student, okay. Okay.
Okay, done. So we have three students. And next, um, uh, we create a release of students. Yeah, false student list equals array list of student. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, so be array list of student equals array list of and we put one by one starting from student one student two and student three into the array list okay we populate the array list and then we set the data of students ld the live data dot value okay so it's equal the student list okay it's equal to student list secondly we have this loading error dot value remember this one is boolean so we can set it true or false whether the loading error or not but for now we just set as dummy dummy thing dummy uh, uh, value okay but in in real case you have to uh, put it in with, with real condition whether it's error or not okay so we have this one so um this little tree live data will emit any data that it has and the observable will receive the data from this and the refresh functions usually uh, it used to reload the data from the database but in this case we just use the hard-coded data okay next um uh, we use this view model okay and we're going to use inside our student list fragments so how to use the view model first we create the variable private uh, let in it far a few model which is uh taken from the list view model class okay and then prepare the adapter private for student list adapter which is taken from our student list adapter and we set it as uh, null yeah set it as null list of yeah that's it okay so because it requires the release we just send an empty release okay so the student data is still empty um remember in without mvvm or without the left data previously you you handle it all inside this fragment so it means that in the all create view on the view created you call the uh, back-end service and then you retrieve the data you repopulate it either with using retrofit or using um folly library and you use use that in your fragment class but in mvvm we separate that yeah logic ui is in the fragments the database and data itself handled by few model okay so um, that's why we create few model here and next we want to initialize the few model okay so where we should put a few initialize model um i usually put on the view created here so we initial by call view model equals view model provider uh this yeah the owner is this dot get get from list view model class dot java java so um this is a, a way to initialize the view model yeah means that our object here um will uh instance will is an instance of our list view model here okay it contains three live data it contains one refresh functions which is the refresh function is used to uh, populate the data from database okay so what you need to do is just call the refresh to uh, reload the data inside the model inside the view model refresh that's it and of course, next we need to initialize the adapter. Remember to initialize the adapter. 
in the recycle view adapter you need to do two things first you have to put the layout manager okay let's call rig view dot uh, set linear i'm sorry layout no no, no. layout manager equals a linear layout manager remember the recycler view can be uh, rendered with single list stacked list from top to, uh, to bottom it use linear layout manager but if you want if you want you can use others layout manager like grid layout manager or staggering layout manager and so on and so on okay next second thing you need to do for the recycle view is you uh, set the adapter equals student list adapter okay i'm sorry um, what i mean is this one okay just copy it paste it here okay and you have this observe view model you may write it inside this on view created it's okay but i prefer to uh, use a new function for it fun observe view model so what this function does is observe view model okay what this function does is uh, to set action for observer about how to handle the emit data so inside the observe view, observe view model is uh, we observe the data that emitted by view model and we do something with the data we usually we, we do some ui things ui things with the data okay so um if, as you can see here in the list view model we have three things to observe the students the loading error and the loading things so uh, first students ld so in here we view model dot uh, students ld okay we call this function observe okay uh, view lifecycle owner which is uh, this fragment uh, state uh, refer to this fragment comma and then we have the observer functions the observer functions it's use lambda expressions i'll enter okay oh, wait, wait 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 android left cycle yeah just i'll enter and just a lot left cycle so this one is lambda expressions okay everything you put and inside this bracket it's all about handling the data of students ld and uh, load it on the UI, yeah. Sends to the UI, update the UI, and so on, based on the student LD. So basically, in this case, we just need to update the adapter. Okay, remember, um, the, when we observe, we get the students list, yeah, the new student list. Whether you add new students on the back end, and this will be observed and it it retrain uh, re refresh the, the new data. And um, as you can see here on the adapter, where is our adapter? Should be in here. Okay. So we have this update student list, which is uh, take a new student list and re-update the content. So back to your student list fragment. In this case, uh, we update the adapter by calling student list adapter dot update student list, and we put it 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 referred to the list of student new list of student okay and that's it for our student ld and there are two things to be observed yeah first is student or loading error yeah we do the same thing view model dot loading error ld dot observe and view lifecycle owner observer here and once again the it function in observer is the value of this loading error ld which is it can be of true or false you see here is if true then if i mean sorry um the txt error why can i not uh, call the txt error wait a minute okay it should be the fragment student list let me see the fragment student list I forgot I forgot to need set ID for text view error 
so this will be txt error okay enter refactor okay and then in the student list fragment i can access it txt error dot visibility it could be visible or gone okay it depends on the it if it true then it should be uh, view dot visible if something happened some error happened else it can be invisible or gone so it depends on the loading error if the loading error is true then the XR text error will be visible else it will disappear finally we have um, our last uh, loading uh, ld observe here view lifecycle owner observer all right and uh, same thing here we we check uh, uh, if the loading is true means the means the recycle view or the data already loaded so we can display it in on on the recycle view means that we don't need to show the progress bar okay so if it true okay we um is it loaded yeah true means loaded we show the visibility of recycle view as view dot visible but else we hide it on screen gun okay and if still not loaded we show the progress load view dot visible but if it's not loaded so we just uh, set the visibility to view dot gun okay so that's it for review and progress load and yeah let's uh let's hit the play buttons and uh, see it in actions so let's me launch the av emulator uh, and you will see uh, what it looks like okay okay before i continue i need to address some things yeah so the loading ld here what i mean with true is let me set comment for it true means is loaded means the data is loaded but false means is still loading means that we shows progress bar it reflects with our if here so if it's true means that um loaded okay it's already loaded but if false is still loading okay i hope you understand this um if you want you can make your own um perception for it but for for me that if the loading is still is true means that it's already loaded yeah and it's false is still loading i'm sorry we should change this to loaded ld yeah? not loading ld okay so uh, that's why we change this to true and when you launch it you will see something like this okay but if you change this as false and we hit the play buttons let's see what happened okay okay as you can see here the fragments observe that loading ld is in false it means that is still loading and it executes this block of functions still loading and the recycle view is gone you cannot see the recycle view here and the progress load is visible so you see the loadings forever okay let's do another experiment let's say let's say we already loaded but it has error in it so we use true here loading error and we hit the play button and take a look what it looks like all right so you see tiny text shows here error loading the data if you want you can hide the recycle view yeah to really, really clear shows the data okay so when you drag it uh swap down vertically you see that uh swipe refresh is working now and 
if you click the details it will be uh, navigate to detail students which is this is your homeworks okay let me explain to you the homeworks before i finish the class okay so um first you have to create a view a new view model and name it as detail view model so uh let's take a look here and we have already have one list view model which is handle the list fragment the student list fragment yeah and we need another list view model uh, sorry we need another view model that handle the detail fragment so you name it as detail view model .kt. and because the detail view model hold single data hold single data no need to create a layer of list just use the single student here okay so this is the live data of mutable live data of stu single student next um create a fetch function remember fetch function is similar purpose it has similar purpose with um refresh function in your list view model you already have refresh function it's uh, serve as similar purpose for uh, refresh functions of course you can change it refresh if you want okay so um for now just use this dummy data yeah just single dummy data remember only single one here and then you update the live data value to student one okay and what you need to do is use the detail view model use this view model to uh to populate or to i mean to shows uh the uh, the object of student in under the um uh, the text view the edit text view here yeah so hence here is call fetch function in student detail fragment the first hints and mix observer for the students live data ignore button update do nothing with the button update and use set text method to change the edit text value do not use dot text yeah because you will get an error for it okay use set text because this one is edit text and not text view means that it's mutable okay so we use the add uh, set text for mutable data all right the due date is next week um please pay attention with this date invite me as collaborator and you must commit plus plus push not exceeding the date yeah so um any comment and push later than this date i will not check it will not check at all okay thank you for your attention if you have any questions you may ask me in a hangout or uh, email thank you Thank you.